Okay, we are done with tuning vocals, so now it is time to jump into some mixing, uh, which I am, I'm going to say, looking forward to. Uh, so I have, here's what I need to do. Uh, while I was tuning vocals, I realized that the vocal tracks themselves are pretty quiet compared to everything else, so there's going to be some uh, re-inputting of headroom that I'm going to need to do. I am going to need to uh, probably add some type of layer underneath, uh, and I'm going to need to make some choices about the electric guitar. Uh, and also I want to do some things to the drums. I mean, this is like basically, this is this is the mix. So all of the audio editing is done, I think. Um, so we just get to make some fun choices about what we do with this song. Um, I don't know that I have talked this over yet in a previous video because it it's been a while since I made the first one. Um, so let me just take a look-see in Ableton. Uh, so I have an effects channel where I just added some risers and impacts, which they just come from like a free, uh, thing that I signed up for and then unsubscribed so I could get the, the samples without being annoyed by emails. Uh, it's from an EDM producer, so they all sound very EDM-y. Um, but I think it works well. So let's take a look here. Um, so one thing I did, just because as I was thinking ahead, was I went ahead and made a new return channel, which I'm going to make this red just so I know for myself and set that to the submaster. So I guess let me talk through some routing really quickly. Uh, so I have all of my tracks, tracked, not tracked, tracks, sending to a submaster except for the clicks and cues just because it doesn't need to be there so my submaster is where i give myself an extra six decibels of headroom so you can see it's set to minus six right in there um and then so all of my tracks all of my sub return my return tracks are set to the submaster and then i have the master track itself where i just have a little limiter i just make sure that nothing peaks i generally don't have to worry about peaking um, with digital audio, uh, but there it is. Um, in Ableton, anyways, all of these channels come with six decibels of headroom, which you can see right there. I wonder, I can zoom in. Um, but six decibels of headroom, so that's nice. Uh, so yeah, so I have, okay, I have a ballad reverb, which, I mean, is exactly what it sounds like. It is a reverb channel that makes it sound like you're, uh, person is singing a ballad it's a three second decay 30 millisecond pre delay um yeah that's just a standard uh reverb that i like to use because i know how it sounds um all right so i've got electric guitar di which justin told me these are three separate takes going out of his pedal board i think actually out of his guitar amp straight in via di as opposed to being mic so i probably am just going to leave these alone um so i'll just look at uh electric guitars one two and three and just make some choices uh i've got this drum room which is kind of like the ambience um reverb which i think i've talked about with some uh audio stuff uh, some vocal channels before but it's like i mean this is an 808 so it's a very digital sounding drum kit uh here we go let's go to here Okay, uh, so I have this big room reverb, apparently. Um, I don't even know how that's working. Oh, the audio is going to the ballad? What if I do this? Yeah. Okay, so that's what my drums sound like. And then I'm going to turn the... Uh, the drum room return track back on. So it just makes them feel a little more spacious. And then I have this drum bus thing, which is kind of a drive pedal. It is a like a, a saturator slash other distortion thing, which is what the, the crunch adds extra distortion to the mid-high frequencies drive 
amount of drive applied to the input signal. So it's like running it through a tube. And then I have the boom, which I might actually. All right, so that feels right. Um, reduce the decay. Yep, and so that'll be the lowest, that kick drum I want to be the lowest thing in, in the mix. And I might double check. So on the kick, if I just look at what options I have here. Uh, don't have much to play with, so. I have attack, decay, sustain, release, but generally not much else. Okay, that's okay. And it looks like I'm actually duplicating this drum bus, so I might just... Nah. This is a whole like effects chain thing, which I'm not gonna get into, but I'm just gonna say these are like drum bus things for the, the tone control, whatever. Um, so yeah, and this is all MIDI, so you know, and actually like if I, I mean here you can see, literally all it is here is MIDI notes. Uh, so if I wanted to I just got a new thing called samples from Mars. Let's see if it's in here. It is. So if I did 808 from Mars, Ableton Live 808, presets kits uh, you know, what if I wanted to drop this tight and crisp kit in then I think all I had to do is double click, otherwise I'm gonna break everything. Hey yo, all right, so now I have new drums. Hmm. Don't love that. But what about like here? Nah, see, that's all, it's all weird. So forget you samples from Mars, I'll play with you some other time. Anyways, uh, I do have lots of drums, so I could use like, Yeah, you know, something like that, or like a lots of options. So that just helps me with programming and, and being able to, to find that out. Um, so yeah, so that's what I did with the drums. I'm gonna leave that there for now. I have my effects channel, which I've taken out all the low end, which uh, is a real choice for the impact. But here's here's that impact channel uh, coming in. Oh, it's not even on. Here's the riser and impact. So that uh, impact has some ping pong delay on it. Uh -huh. So here that is in, in the track. You traded heaven to have me again. My heart my so it's just kind of an idea to like add some sustain. I don't know that I'm set on it, but that's that's an idea there. Um it's a long tail. Bass here. Okay, so first things first, because this is a, an EDM track, uh, I'm going to add what is called sidechain compression to the bass so that I can make sure that I always hear slash feel the kick. So that's gonna go at the very end of the channel um, and my compressor, however you activate it, it's called sidechain and the audio is in from the drum and the kick drum specifically. So if you will watch right in here, this area, I'm gonna set the threshold here. So here's what the compressor sidechain is hearing. So it is compressing the bass track according to when the kick drum fires. So I am going to slow the release down just a little bit. and turn the gain, the input gain up just so I can raise the threshold some. That's nice, and maybe set the ratio to three. Mm -hmm. All right, and then turn off the headphones. Okay, so there's that. Uh, and basically what that does is the compressor literally helps the 
reduce the amount of fight between the kick drum and the bass because they take up the same frequencies, you know, but like the kick drum is only there for a moment. So um, here is the 808 kick drum only. So we can just look at the frequencies here. So the main thing is right in this area, which is 40s to 120, which is about what you'd expect. Um, you know, everything sub 100 hertz is just feel. So you need a, a sub to really be able to hear that. And then above 100 hertz, you start to actually hear it. So I have the bass set to be, you know, right here at 120. And you can see it's got a little bit of lift. So what I'm actually going to do is roll off. I'm going to put a high pass filter on uh, my first knob here and just go ahead and set that at 50. And that'll just cut out all that low end space from the bass. And I unsolo the kick. So let's see what that sounds like. Watching the lights be on the stars It's dazzling heights to uh, I turned off the reverb. Okay, so now Here's on the Submaster Just so we can see kind of everything that's going on And I'll make sure make this bigger Okay, so here we go So this is Watching the lights be on So you can see the bass is literally just sitting right here at 72 and the kick drum is coming in right here around 50. Which actually, that's where I set the boom on the drum bus is 55, around A. My thing was saying G, but whatever. So, uh, so yeah, so then if I undo all of this just to show you once more, I don't need that anymore. Uh -huh. Okay, so turn that off and turn that off. Here's where we're at. Watching the lights be on the stars. Stabbing so you see all of that bass stuff down here in this range is is uh, cluttering up that low end sound, and you don't want a whole lot of clutter in the low end because of those waves. Uh, they just will clash and clash and clash, and it gets really muddy really quickly. So that is why I am adding this and this. This being the high pass. This being side chain compression. This gives us a tighter low end. You want that low end to be tight, baby. Okay, uh, so there's that. I uh, got keys. So right now, all right. So I'm gonna set a compression on the keys because I want to hear the attack. Set it before the EQ because I want it to feel a little bright because the keys patch themselves is dull. So my my general starting point for keys, and I borrowed this from like a Worship main stage. I don't know. It's going to be like that kind of keys sound that you hear on all Worship records is like a ratio of three, uh, an attack of 30 milliseconds, release of 200, 300, 500 milliseconds. Uh, and what that does is that really emphasizes like, hey, before we start the compression, give me 30 milliseconds and that 30 milliseconds says hello attack so you get all of the the makeup gain applied to the attack and then the compressor kicks in and says okay now hold on to the body hold on to the release of that and make it last a little bit more um so that's the the like worship keys compression style that's going to change from genre to genre from person to person you know whatever but like i'm not going for anything particularly crazy i want this to be a good worship track so that feels like a good place to start um and then okay again on the eq um we have a cut at 100 hertz um and then a scoop here right at 230 um and i'm going to show you here's what that track sounds like right now without well okay yeah i'm going to just kind of add in each thing so So you can see we got a little low end rumblies right where the bass is. I don't want that. Okay, also we're only getting like a little bit of uh, compression happening, so I want more compression. Okay, so now we can really hear the attack of the piano. Cut out the low end. 
I mean, if you're if you have a good uh, playback system, then you will have heard some of the body was lost on the piano. But remember, there's a bass, so we don't need any of that because I care more about the bass than the piano, uh, and I can still hear what's going on and just feel less of it. So I'm okay with that. So that's my first thing is just roll off at 100. Then I actually scoop out around 2:30. Uh, so here's that. Okay, so we've lost a lot of body in the piano, but actually looking ahead ahead, a sneak peek for a little bit later, I'm probably gonna double the bass track and create a high and a low mix. Uh, and so 2.30, like considering that I'm, you know, this song is gonna get played back on hopefully iPhone speakers. I mean, hopefully in that like, people will listen to it on their iPhones or other small handheld devices. Those devices don't have any low end, really below 100. And so I need to make sure that the bass Right now, where the bass is sitting is predominantly in that 100 range. And so, like, unless they have it really loud or have it, like, on their head behind their ear so they can feel that low end response, they're not actually going to hear the bass. But a lot of the song is taking place in the bass range and registers. Uh, so, I want to scoop that out of the piano so I can really create space for the bass. Uh, so, that's why I did that. And then uh, bump it again this is my third and final little thing for right now. Uh, the EQ is right around one and a half kilohertz. Um, and that is just for some presence, uh, just to set it. I might actually move that a little bit lower considering everything else we have coming in with the vocals and the guitars. It just depends on, I haven't really listened to the guitars yet, but just to add some, some lift and some presence to the piano. So here's what that sounds like. Okay, so with the bass, and then here's without. See, like when when you have that, if you don't scoop that out of the bass, then the piano is overpowering what the bass is doing. So, but now I can really hear the piano. Okay, but right now, like, I'm hearing things in the bass, but I'm not, like, hearing them. I hear them because these are bass-boosted headphones, but uh, I know that they're not going to be able to be heard. Um, so I'm just going to do that right now. So, okay, so here's what I do. Duplicate the track. Group said tracks. Make sure that the routing is right. So, sense to the group, sense to the submaster, rename this bass, rename this low, rename this high. Take my side chain compression off and stick it on the master track. Okay. All right. So here's what we're looking at. I just think it's a little cleaner. So I've got bass, low, high, right? So the low thing is great. The high thing, I'm actually going to do this and set this to be a gentler slope and roll it on up. It's like 130, and then I'm gonna maybe just use this guy and just boost it obnoxiously. Okay, and let's see what that sounds like. Actually, while I'm listening, I don't really want the side chain, so. Nice, okay, so much more presence. I'm here just for monitoring purposes. Okay, so now it generally sits in the low mid range. If I turn off the high channel, you can see the EQ spectrum is just less dense. If I add in the high channel, and then you can see my levels are actually different. So I'm gonna drop this by three. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna drop this by like six. And then take this guy and add a, a utility plugin so that I can. Where is that guy? Here we go. Utility. And here, the very front, add that gain in by uh, maybe three. Oh, 
Oh, here we go. Okay, so basically you can see the spikes are happening further up, which is good. You want to hear that. Um, so really, maybe I want to add... I mean, that's a, that's a ridiculous curve, but that's, I mean, that's the sound that I want. Mm -hmm. It really takes us all the way up to 1K. And then what I could do is I could actually add, and maybe I'll go ahead and do this. I'm gonna add the saturation knob to the base before the saturator, or sorry, before the side chain, keep it low and turn the saturation up. Too much. Uh huh. But here, if I just go nuts, you can see how it fills that out even more. I don't want all that sound though. All right, so the point of the saturation is it just adds a little bit of drive, a little bit of extra fullness to its sound without being too present. Uh huh. All right, and then side chain compression is back on. So with the drums. Nice. With the piano. Okay, hello everything. Great, so that's a great place to start uh, that. So, got vocals, and then that's a chorus. Here we go. I touch the sky when my knees hit the ground. All right, so. Let's just get some levels set. Um, apparently I've already panned some things left and right. Cool. Uh, so compress so this one. I don't need to hear a ton of attack, but it needs to last a while. So we're gonna do ratio of like four, keep the attack fast, slow release. Let's listen to that again. Uh -huh. Nice. Okay, so wanted to point out just to watch the levels without the compression. Ah, oh, I've already done some stuff. Okay, great. Well, I'm gonna delete that and that and that. Okay. Nice. So, so that slow release really helps the level stay nice and loud and uh, full. So now I'm just gonna EQ this guy. Don't care about the low end for this one. Just need it to be heard. And I can change the slopes here. Okay, so here's here's the other deal. Um, in a in a pristine studio situation, I'm gonna actually switch because I I know how to do this. In a pristine studio situation, uh, the bass that is playing the lead line could be a different bass, could have different knob settings, could be running through a different amp, lots of things. Uh, that 
EQ slope that you just saw me add to that is ridiculous. Uh, but sometimes that's what it takes to make the sound what you want. Um, so don't be afraid to just do that. Uh, there is a lot of credit, uh, a lot of, um, not credit, but a lot of uh, smart thinking in getting it right when you record, but that's not always the case because for 8 million different reasons. Uh, so just don't be afraid to do the things that you want to do to make sure that it's good. So here we go. Back into Ableton. Uh, so that's there's that ridiculous EQ. And let's just listen here. Okay, so that might need to change because I'm noticing up here that the low end drops out. But that might be okay. So let's listen to our arpeggiated bass part. Okay, so just for funsies, I'm gonna go ahead and take this, copy it over to the ARP channel, and... Okay, stupid loud, great. Okay, so this one, uh, you can see I reduced the high-end boost because it's up the neck, obviously. I added some more low-end roll-off because, again, we don't need that for this kind of arpeggiation. Um, I've got a stronger ratio compressor, a slightly slower attack because I do want to hear that kind of initial finger-picking of bum bum bum, and then a longer release just because it's up the neck, uh, so I think it needs some more help. So what I'm also going to do is I'm just going to add this delay... Yeah, now it sounds like a worship guitar because I added that dotted eighth delay. Nice. Okay, so let's see how that sounds with everything. Oh, brilliant. Okay, so generally I like that once I turn everything way the junk down to be able to hear it. Um, so basically what I've done is I have gone and added myself 12 decibels of headroom, which is kind of ridiculous, but that's a thing that I needed to do anyways because uh, I'm going to need some room for this song to grow dynamically, and it's already really, really maxed out. So I just pushed all the faders down by 12 decibels so I could hear stuff. Um, I don't know. I wish I'd known how long we were recording for 29 minutes okay uh so that's keys bass arp lead all right so that's a, a good place i'm gonna do something quickly to the rhythm here just listen to that and then it'll be a good good place to call it quits for this video Okay, great. So really probably not a lot will need to be done with this because it already sits so high. 
Um, so I'm just gonna, you know, I'm gonna take this arpeggiation compression and drop it onto the rhythm one. That seems good. And I'm gonna drop an EQ plug in just to see if I need... There is a lot of low end. Again, don't wanna muddy the waters here. Okay, so right now it is sitting, it has a boost at the same place that the piano does, but because it's panned right, I am not worried about it uh, because I have, you know, the full stereo field uh, plus at each, you know, kind of degree. It doesn't exactly work out like this. I'm sure the math is wrong, but the way I think about it is you have, uh, from, you have 180 degrees of 20 to 20,000 hertz, you know, so each degree you get a new section of 20 to 20,000 hertz. Doesn't work like that, but that's how I like to think about it. So it's not just like you only have, you know, a flat 2D 20 to 20,000 hertz to fill up. You have that extra dimension of like you can turn. And then with reverb too, again, it doesn't work that way, but you can actually set things in space, you know, so something sounds further away or closer up. And, and so you have, that's kind of the general stereoscope with which I mix. Uh, so uh, all that to say, I'm not worried about boosting the rhythm bass part in the same spot that I boosted the piano because it's panned hard right. Great, all right. Uh, so that's probably it. I'm just gonna double check here. Okay, there is a note clash there, so I'm going to have to figure something out there, but that's for next video, we're just going to leave it there for now. See you next time.